and basketball is revealing that you don't know how to handle life. Yeah. These experiences in basketball to learn how to handle something in life. I had like the same reoccurring dream for like three months. And this is gonna sound crazy. I got surgery, then I came back from surgery too fast and broke it again. First off, I appreciate you coming here. I know you're a busy guy. I've seen almost, we, we talked about this, all your videos, and I know you have a busy schedule. So, hey, I appreciate you coming today and sharing yeah, some knowledge yeah, with me. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. first things first, who's Trey Drexel? What, are, what do you do? Like, yeah, what are we here um, talking about today, man? That's always a big question, asking somebody who they are. But, uh, yeah, I mean, right now what I do is I play basketball overseas in Europe, uh, going on year six. I uh, started in Serbia, went to Poland, uh germany and now portugal for the people that don't know a lot about overseas basketball um basically each each country has their own domestic league um and then the best teams from those domestic leagues play in these bigger international competitions you got euro league euro cup basketball champions league and fiba euro cup and uh that's kind of like when you know you're elevating and so that's uh i've played in the basketball champions league for two years and this will be my third year coming up so it's probably considered the third best league in Europe. So I like to consider myself decently high level. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I do. And on the side, I make a lot of uh, content about my journey, documenting it, storytelling. And I believe uh, all athletes have a very inspirational story to tell. And I think uh, the athletic journey is inspirational because uh, athletics mirror life. And I think it's really relatable for people who don't even play sports um, to really get the real of the journey. And uh, that's I started a YouTube channel and I uh, post a lot on social media kind of sharing that journey because, uh, yep. yeah, I think it helps people and I think it motivates people. And that's kind I mean, of where my mind's at. I completely agree. I mean, it definitely helped me. Uh, we talked about this before, but it's crazy. We we really like connected with each other just from social media. And uh, it was all like, remember I told you the last time we met in Malaga, um, I was with one of my teammates, Yoaf, that he's probably watching this video. And uh, we started watching your videos. Like it was just inspiration. And you really inspired us to do ourselves our own series of videos with the 40 days straight getting better and everything. And yeah, we kind of connected from there. Then uh, we tried to plan something for the summer that didn't like, we, we're not going to say anything yet. Oh. It might, it might be next summer. It might be next. Summer. It, it might be next summer. Yep. But uh, yeah, man, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're showing your story. I feel like your story is very relatable to a lot of people. Uh, to some extent, I'm living the life that you're living in in Europe. I'm living in the United States. I left home. I'm away from my family. I'm trying to uh, make a living out of this. So I feel like we're on different paths, but we're similar on like a lot of things that we gotta go through day to day. Uh, so that's really that's really nice that we have a, a little time to talk and just share knowledge and everything. Uh, I haven't asked you this yet first things first sure. why do you start playing basketball uh you told me something about you in college i know something about walk-on yep. spots and everything but i want to know how bray started playing basketball what's your why I, I mean that's a big question i mean i think growing up like i started playing basketball just because i love it you know uh it's a very dynamic sport and uh it's very creative and i was better at baseball growing up uh, like a lot a lot better if i'm be honest i was a really good baseball player um, I always played up a couple of years, got my first okay. scholarship offer in baseball and not basketball. And so, uh, but I stopped, I just quit. I got a division one scholarship offer and I just quit the year after because for me, division one baseball was, player. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Big time. Uh, but it wasn't dynamic enough for me. It was very, uh, I mean, it was calculated and stuff, but I didn't feel like I could really express myself in the way, same way you can in basketball, because like in basketball, it's cool because it's unique. It's a blend of, there's so much style and like personality right. in basketball. Yeah. And for me, that's kind of why I started, you know, playing it and fell in love with it. I mean, my relationship with basketball has, uh, and, and my why behind playing basketball has really like, changed as i've grown up and as i've matured um i, I would even say in, in in when i was younger about 17 18 and even going to college a lot of reason i played basketball is to prove people that think to prove people wrong it's just just show people that thought i couldn't be a basketball player because you know uh yeah i don't know where i come from the small little town nobody really plays college basketball or high level basketball right. and, um and no one in my family was like a you know division one player um right stuff like that and and I didn't really know anybody like that. No one in my friend group had. I mean, excuse me. Uh, there's a guy you're older than me. That's my brother Evan. I can't discredit him, but he was the first one in our friend group to play college basketball. Okay. But uh, I, I didn't want to discredit him right there. But uh, yeah, so I kind of did it to prove people wrong. And then 
I had went through a lot of stuff. Like it became who I was. Like a lot of athletes, like their sport is who they are. And I find it, found out that was, you know, kind of fragile and it led to a lot of different things. Um, but now it, basketball is more so for me. And yeah. the reason I still play basketball is how, how I support my family, provide for my family. And it's how I think I build a platform to inspire others. I think um, basketball is a cool sport. This is genuinely has a cool factor. So a lot of people <laughs> like to watch and yeah. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting pretty good at it. So I'm rising levels to where I have more eyes on me. But to me, like the part that's the most fulfilling is, you know, uh, the impact that I can have on others and especially my family. So, yeah, I feel like uh, to add to that, too, I feel like we come from different perspectives, but like same idea, like growing up, my dad was a professional basketball player. So like it was wrong if I didn't play basketball, you know, it's just like the thing that uh, if, you, if you have a, a basketball dad and then you play soccer, it's like it doesn't it doesn't seem right. So just growing up, it was like a lot of things that I had to prove. Like it was a lot of pressure coming from my city. And uh, I didn't feel that at first. The last video that I posted actually was like first part of my story as a basketball player. So growing up until I came to the United States. And I feel like uh, it's hard sometimes, you know, to like put all those all that pressure on yourself. I feel like I still live that like uh, not to the mm -hmm. same extent because I'm in the United States and nobody knows my dad. So it's more like yeah. I'm another kid from Spain. Yeah, that's one of the questions that I that I was going to ask you later. Like, how do you deal with that pressure with the why that you have? How does that why support yeah. why you still do what you do? Because sometimes yeah. it's hard. Sometimes your uh, your thoughts, you have a bad practice, maybe a bad week or a bad month. How do you overcome that? Uh it's definitely a different type of pressure now because like uh, now that basketball is like my job and like how I provide for my family, it's it's a very different dynamic. It's not just, OK, <laughs> you know, you play bad, get them next time. It's like, OK, right. you really play bad for a season that next year you might make much less money and uh, the life for your family might look very different. And that's part of the, right. the reality of playing overseas. And so it used to really kind of mess with me. And I've kind of grown a lot in my understanding of it because pressure means pressure, nerves, excitement, uh, all these things mean that you care about the thing. So right. it doesn't, like there's this automatic idea that pressure is bad and uh, it's kind of this scary thing, this thing that can overwhelm you. And it only is what you make it. And so like for me, like I've kind of transitioned this pressure and oh, OK, I care about my family. I care about my future. These are good things. OK, so now you take a step back and it's like, OK, what's the real pressure? I just got to put a ball through the hoop. Like I think it was Damian Lillard had a quote in a post game interview, like same thing. How do you do with pressure? And he's like, this isn't pressure. Like I grew up not knowing where my next meal was coming from. That's right. true pressure so i think the easiest way to handle pressure is to step back and look at it from a different perspective because it's like okay maybe i make less money the next year or something like this but like my family will be okay like there's this ultimate trust and perfect timing and and like i always say i i said in my last newsletter but trust and perfect timing i, I take a step further trust in god's perfect timing but it's this idea that everything happens for a reason and so like pressure becomes obsolete because it's like, OK, right. you know, Pablo, you had to go a different route than maybe you expected. But mm -hmm. if you're looking at it like it happened for a reason, you're thankful for it because it's going to make you who you will need to be in the future. And so 100 like, percent. Very quickly, pressure disappears. I completely agree with that. I feel like uh, it's something that has, has been hard for me, especially because sure. I, had, I had so many expectations and goals before I came to the United States that it was just like I, I saw that time went by and I wasn't getting where I needed to go. It was like a strain for myself, you know? It was. And talking about that, I don't know if this is a topic that you want to get into, but uh, it's really big for me. And it's God and my belief in God. I think you went to a Christian school, right? Yeah. Yep. For me, like whenever I grew closer to God, I feel like it's so much pressure just went off because I felt like I understood that uh, the plan that he has and the plan that I maybe I thought I had is, is they don't align. You know, and sometimes yep. you just got to keep going, get better day by day, step by step. That's something that I'm, I'm trying to like put a lot of like emphasis right now. This co yep. last couple of months, like day by day. Um, And then everything's going to be OK, bro. Like if yeah, you just go day by day, everything's going to be OK. And then sometimes bad things happen for you to build up, get to the person that you have to be in the future. And I think it's um, a skill. Man, I think it's a big skill to learn that ability to trust in God's perfect timing because one 100 percent, bro. Uh, because this idea of trust it, it hits it hits right where so you're not the only one that talks like this. Almost every athlete that wants to be really great or is a high performer, they speak like this because the idea of trusting something outside of your control or trusting that things will be okay, it takes you letting go of control and realizing it's like, bro, it's, right. it's not a matter of if I work this hard, this will happen. Work this hard so there's a high chance this will happen, but this the outcome isn't guaranteed. And right. there's there's a matter of luck of, of all these 
these things. You know yeah, most saying? of the like, times it's out of your control. Like you just like yeah. it's, it depends on how a coach perceives you or maybe yeah. like the opportunity the team has on you. You know, it's so difficult though to to trust. Enough, like you need to trust, but you also need to reflect in terms of did you prepare for this moment. Right. So, so there's there's a, there's a subtle like uh, back and forth balance of okay trust and okay what you wanted didn't happen so maybe this God has something else in the right. plans for you or something like this. But also, did you work and did you prepare enough for this outcome to happen? You right. know what I'm saying? So like you have to take responsibility for a lot of things. But you have to also acknowledge that some things are out of your control. One thing that I got to add on that is the overthinking part, bro. Whenever you prepare yourself, I, th I think I saw it in one of your videos that you said you're a, I don't know if you said like a chronic overthinker, sure. something like that. Um, same thing happens to me, especially on a new team that I'm at right now, you know, new concepts, new guys, everything. I'm like, damn, did I prepare enough? You know, am I ready? Like I'm, I start overthinking and overthinking and creating all these situations in my head. Uh, but sometimes that just comes from a preparation. I think in terms of overthinking too, and like what you're talking about is like, <laughs> you can very quickly overthink your way into a false reality because overthinking 100%. is a lot of time obsessing about scenarios that are not even real like you're 100%. actually putting yourself in these false realities so you can start making this narrative that you didn't prepare and it's like the key to overthinking i think every time is to try and find things that ground you in truth like what are absolute truths in your life you know what i'm saying like and the way you get to these absolute truths in your life are things that you are wildly consistent in and so like that's where i started um kind of making big strides as i I found things to be wildly consistent in. So every morning I wrote down my intentions and I write down my intentions and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to be today. Like, this is the truth. Today I will be this because I wrote this down. I took the time to write this down. So I'm gonna, for example, every day, let me, know. let me ask you, for example, in those intentions, would you add like basketball stuff? Like, let's say today I, I gotta, I gotta do this, this and that, like things that you have to do in order to like become that person. For my intentions, I'll make them simple, like be a word and okay. I'll do three of them. Maybe today I'll be like, um, be laser focused. Okay. Okay. That's one. All right. Number two, uh, like for example, uh, my intention yesterday, I said, be a teacher. Cause I knew I was going to write my newsletter that day. And so right. I was like, I wanted to approach this action with this intention in mind. So I didn't write it from a different place. Okay. Right. And so then I'll write my three intentions for the day and I'll okay. usually look at what I have kind of scheduled for the day. Okay. I got practice. I got this, I got this. Okay. And those experiences I want to be this way, three characteristics essentially. And then right. underneath that, I'll write a couple of things that I think if I did them, they would exemplify those characteristics. So if okay. I say be laser focused and then I may write down like, okay, um, let's work on pick and roll shots uh, against a drop coverage because I know that the team we're playing is in a drop coverage. So this to me is the ne next level of focus. You know, this is like okay. and being very detail oriented. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so, 100%. So it's, it's like you write down who you want to be and then you write down how you are going to be who you want to be that right. day. And now I'm telling you, do that for two months, look back and you're going to be like, holy, I like what I see. Uh, you're going right. to like what you see. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I feel like whenever you have a plan, Plan and you just like follow it you're able to come back and actually see uh what you did you know like i feel like a guy that i've always uh, followed that does that a lot is david goggins he always says like i remember i read his book he says something about like uh whenever you don't feel like doing something whenever you feel like overthinking you you gotta be able to like he said it he said it like this he said like take a cookie from the cookie jar like go back to that memory that you had whenever you did something like for example the 40 days was a big thing for me it was just like saying okay i'm gonna do this i'm gonna stay solid for 40 days not miss a day work out every day and then and that brought so much confidence into me because I knew I did something for a long period of time. Why am I not going to be able to do it one day at a time? So I completely agree. Whenever you have goals and whenever you're focused on getting better at certain things every day, you end up like making huge strides in the future. One thing real yeah. quick, a guy in your perspective, like going into a new situation yeah. where you like you've had success in your career, like you've played well at a young age, you've had big games, you've, you've been good at basketball for a long time. It's easy to in this, uh, kind of small moment of a one day of practice freak out right. because you're like oh shoot i'm not good today Back. but and you have all this pressure this overthinking and then you start am i not good but bro, just right. take a breath you go home and you and you like you said take a cookie out of the cookie jar but it's th this idea of zooming out and having perspective on your life and being oh, like wait a second pablo has been a dog since he's been six years old i've been you've been playing basketball you've been working on your craft like right one day doesn't change who you are 
because if that is, then every day is pressure packed. You know what I'm saying? Right. But there's the value in each day, putting your best foot forward and trying to be who you want to be. So take mm -hmm. the action to be who you want to be, but don't care as much about the re result day to day. Just take the step. Right. How can you have a bad step? You're just stepping. You're just moving. You're just walking forward. You're walking in your greatness. You can't mm -hmm. have a bad day of walking in your greatness. I want to bring this to one thing that uh, I don't know a lot about you because you started doing this uh, whenever you were a pro. Like, I want to bring this back to your college days. How was college for you, man? I don't know. So college was a crazy experience. I had, uh, I was a late bloomer in a lot of areas of my life in terms, I went to a really small high school. Okay. So I had a very um, predictable and kind of bubble social experience. I was in sort of, uh, I had my same friend group. I still have my same friend group. Uh, that experience kind of like socially of seeing who I was outside of that and kind of finding who I was. I went to a very, uh, I went to Christian high school too, that was very right. bubble oriented as well. And so like, I wasn't ready for a lot of the, I don't know, the, the new experiences in college, this these new perspectives. Yeah, I was just like in a, in a bubble. And so like, right. I think my first, yeah, I think I didn't necessarily handle that either. I think I was pretty immature. And so uh, when I look back to my college time, like I don't love the person I was, but I know in that period and who I've always been is someone that's trying to improve and trying to right. become better. And I didn't have a lot of uh, self-awareness in those moments, but I think now looking back, I still took the step every day. I was actively trying to figure out how to get better. Um, but I had a lot of, dude, I had a lot of, you know, tough moments. Like I, I walked yeah. on my, my freshman year, so I didn't have a scholarship. I still got student yeah, loans. I, I, I did not year. know that. Whenever you told me that for the first time in my life, I was like, what? Yeah, that's it was crazy, crazy man. man. So I had uh, my junior year of high school school, I started getting a little bit of buzz. It was just like division threes, some small D2s. And then the, it was my first year at AU. I only played one year and right. it was my junior year. I was played on Friends of Hoop where like Zach Levine, Isaiah Thomas, uh, all these big names have okay. played. And uh, first game of the scouting period, I broke my pelvis going up for a dunk. Like my whole leg gave out. It's like crazy, nasty injury. And all the little colleges that were talking to me, they left. And I ended up recovering in like 10 weeks, eight weeks. Made it back okay. to my senior high school. Player of the year in my small division it was like the fourth division basically in high school so we only had like 100 and divisions are are not by how good your teams are just how i, I was about to say good. people here they're not people from spain especially especially they, yeah, they don't like, understand uh, yeah, they so don't even understand how college works either so but, like, no but, but so this was high school this is high school and right, your, right. your school is separated by how big how many students are in your school right so similar size schools play each other and we were like the there's six divisions we were like the fourth so it was pretty small okay. but i was a player of the year in that division and i after that, I had a, probably like three, probably about five or six Division II offers. Um, and I had a 70% offer to the school I ended up going to. But okay. when I had called the coach to commit, uh, he had told me that the scholarship offer would be there until May 15th. I called May 4th and he was like, oh, sorry, son, we gave it away. No. And I told all, all the other Division IIs I wasn't interested. So then I went and I played played AU. I, I tried to do okay. this and I had some Division One walk-on spots, but I, I had already fell in love with that school. And so ended up going there as a walk-on. I'll show you, man. That's big what though, crazy, man. What's, bro, what's crazy is my 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 boy, Dalton Hamas, who played for Basconia. Bro, he was a walk-on too. No, no. He was a walk-on at my school too. No way. Oh, what's going on with that? school man i like bro, bro so i walked on that year he walked on the next year now we're both where we're at it's just like crazy hey, that coach was a good recruiter man i tell you he had to be bro <laughs> like hey yeah that's big though that's big that's betting on yourself i respect but that. it didn't feel smooth either like when i first got there it was same thing i didn't think i belonged i was all nervous uh took me probably about a month to settle in i probably was one of the worst players that first month month and then i kind of settled in and yeah but once you realize who you are and you're like oh wait you know i can be i can compete here and be really good right uh, i settled in quick and then that next year i was on a full scholarship and but okay. my freshman and sophomore year i had these crazy I, so i broke my foot the same bone three times in i think it was 13 months you've really dealt with injuries oh I didn't know dude, that, it, is, bro, it was the same exact injury so i broke my fifth metatarsal which is like really common it's like the outside of your yeah foot. it's called the jones fracture 
fracture. K KD had it. Damian Lillard had it. I think Paul George might have had it. It's like a really common thing in, okay. in basketball players. You're on your, your toes a lot, and so there, there's pressure. Mm -hmm. So I broke it, and uh, someone had told me to not get surgery. Oh, no, so sorry. Before I broke it, I got a stress fracture in a different bone. Changed how I moved. So that was the first stress fracture. Right. Changed how I moved, and then I came back from the stress fracture like in like 10 weeks. Broke the outside of my foot. And then uh, they told me, like, like someone gave me the advice not to get surgery but this is something you get surgery right away it's like an easy fix right. so i didn't get surgery and then that made the process longer and then i had to get surgery got surgery then i came back from surgery too fast and broke it again nah bro like to the <laughs> screw the screw was in my screw was in my foot and i broke it only all the way to the screw it was nah, bro, that's, that's crazy bro how do you deal with all those injuries that early as a college player bro because like yeah, I, bro. i've had injuries but not like that man 13 months is way too much uh i don't know i think it goes back to that one foot in front of the other like i was depressed i i mean like you're in college so you're drinking a little bit but like drinking by yourself type stuff and yeah it's just a lot to handle especially when i had identified as a basketball player like i was like, i was oh, about I'm to say and that's big time i think that's something that a lot of players uh deal with today is that basketball like it just just takes so much of who they are that whenever you're not actually doing that it's like it's just like hard you know yeah but dude i i had like yeah i had like the same reoccurring dream for like three months and this is gonna sound crazy almost like i don't know it was weird but it was this dream that i was like running away from like this shadow and the shadow was chasing me and i run yeah. i'm screaming like yelling at people to help me no one could hear me because they couldn't understand what was going on and then What's... i would run up to the roof of my house I would jump off the roof and then right before I hit the ground, I wake up for three months straight. No way, bro. And I started reflecting on this afterwards. I was like, man, what? Like, it was just crazy. It just kind of went away. But it hits on this idea of, of how you feel as an athlete when you're injured. No one understands the pain you're going through. So you're okay. like screaming out for help, like, bro, you guys don't get it. I'm hurting. I don't get to do the thing I love. Like, I don't feel right. like I can express myself. No one understands me. And you're like running. And you're like, because you have this idea, like, I had gotten the same injury. So I was like, oh, it's just going to happen again. Right. But it was like shadows chasing me, right? And then it would just get overwhelming. And then I would, no one could understand, no one could help me. So I would just try and escape and then I'll wake up. And so it's just like, a, it's like a microcosm into what you feel as a, you know, during those injuries. And, and then once I started recognizing that and just kind of having some perspective and self-awareness, bro, like now I laugh, like, it's like funny to right. me because that just mirrors like how everybody feels as athletes, dude. It sucks when you get injured. 100%, 100% bro. And I wish I could give you a reason, like a way to, to maneuver it emotionally, but each person's different. Like uh, you just have to, I think N Nipsey Hussle said it, is like the only difference between you and me is I just didn't quit. Like, I don't know how I got right. here. I just kept walking, man. I just kept trying yep. to figure it out. Try, like I just always try and figure it out like always wonder why I'm feeling this why I'm doing this it's just I feel like that's the best response you could have gave I feel like so much how many so many people even to me they ask me how do you deal with like overthinking or like injuries and everything and I'm like it's just hard because like the way I, I deal with them might not be the same way you deal with them there's no so, like secret recipe Right. Like I have this uh, secondary Instagram account that I just post basketball videos and all my reels and everything. And I was like, I'm bringing this high level pro. I didn't say who you were. So this is going to be live. Like nobody knew. But um, I was like, if you could ask him a question, what would it be? And I had the same question over and over again. And it was like, what steps do I have to take in order to become a pro? Or what steps do I have to take in order to like, you know what I mean? And it's like, I get it. Like, I know you want to make it. I know it's like everybody's dream to play basketball is to live yeah. from basketball. But yeah. it's like, it's just different for everybody, you know? Yeah. I, but I mean, that's like a great question. Like I had this, those same questions growing up and I just didn't really have anybody in my life like willing to right. take the time to just help me understand why I'm asking those questions and, and stuff. And that's kind of like my motivation behind my YouTube channel and like sharing mm -hmm. content and trying to be open and honest about my journey is like, guys feel like someone's kind of alongside them like i'm still going through the same things it's just 100 like i've just learned like different ways to handle them but i I mean, when you ask that question, I think the two things are you got to be adaptable and you got to be hard headed and like never quit. And then you got to be lucky um, and blessed. Like, like I can't deny I'm six foot six, like 210 pounds. Like that's the, some of the hard, hard things. Like sometimes like I'll get a dude be like, I'm five, eight, 130 pounds, 22 years right. old. How can you be a pro? And I'm like, right. you can be a professional in so many other ways in your life. You can have right. the mindset and the take away all the things from a pro athlete, but be a pro in your own lane like you can love basketball and be professional at something else or you can 100%. still play basketball that professional but it's, it's not going to support your 
your life, but be the same you are in basketball in your life, right? That's why I think everybody should learn to be a pro. But um, yeah, back to what I was saying is like adaptability is like in my journey. I think that's the one thing I, I have to shout myself out for is like I would learn right. from everything. Learn, adapt. You don't know what's going to happen. Like, okay, you your college career didn't go this way. Okay, but now you go this way. Now you go this way. It's like just bobbing right. and weaving and, and rolling with the punches. And now like I'm at a point where my emotions don't do the same as the bob and weave from all the experiences. Right. Now I'm the same emotionally, but I'm still getting better at like bobbing and weave and like dealing with like this little, you know, the little injury I just had in the last game. Like, yes. oh, I might miss this game I wanted to play in. Oh, I don't get to play in this. In the past, my emotions would have been like, oh, I'm so mad. I'm this. That's not sustainable. That's not the type of human I want to be. That's not the type of father or, or husband I want to be in the future. Like something crazy might happen in my family. Like something right. crazy might happen. Like I might have kids and you know, all these things. I want to set an example that no matter what happens, no, no matter what happens is like, I'm going to be solid. And I think that adaptability is, is the most important thing in becoming a pro in anything. Let's take it away from pro in, in athletics, because I think everybody, how do I become a pro athlete? You right. got to go talk. To, I don't know, the strength performance coach and the shooting coach and the this and the right. this. And no one person is going to have that answer for you. So. Never. But I feel like the, those two answers that you gave are really important, it's especially like uh, one of the things that you told me whenever we were in Malaga and I like it stuck up with me. And whenever I, I have a bad day and I just try to go back on that cookie jar and I bring yeah. up that story, like it doesn't matter yeah. how many times you're going to bring me down, I'm still going to stand up and go at it. First, you're going to learn how to adapt because adaptability, I feel like it comes from experience experience and from being thinking like I got to be more adaptable but then the getting up part is like understand that you care about this you know and if you yeah. care so much about this and you love this sport so much it doesn't matter what comes in your way you're still going to adapt to it for, like even for you like, I don't know your future I don't know what the future holds you could go play in the right. NBA in the Euro League whatever happens whatever happens but if you take with this idea that no matter how many times something some setback something knocks you down you're going to get up and you're going to learn and you're dude I'm not worried about Pablo no more as a human because you're going to be successful right. in anything thing you you might you might be the best real estate mogul ever like i like right. the world is your is your oyster if you know that you're never down and out you're never gonna quit yeah and that's i feel like that's the beauty of basketball and the sport in general like it just exposes you to all those things so early that whenever you actually like go to live life right. all those things that i went through have built up the person that i am today and i know the mm -hmm. things that i'm going through right now are going to build me up to the person that i got to be whenever i'm 23 or 24. i think the issue is that basketball mirrors life like you said you're gonna learn all these lessons that you're gonna learn in life people you know say ball is life whatever but that's why every bro basketball players are so emotional like they're hella like, emotional because, like i get like dms from all these kids how do i do this i'm i'm so depressed i'm so this i'm like bro right. it's because you don't know how to handle life and basketball is revealing that you don't know how to handle life Jeez. Experiences in basketball to learn how to handle something in life. You know what I'm saying? That's big, bro. That's big. That's a that's a nice like, clip. That's yeah, a nice that's clip a that I'm one. gonna take from that. Yep. You especially, bro. A situation that you are. You're from the United States. You live in Portugal right now. How do you deal with like homesickness, missing family, mm -hmm. especially whenever like you're away for that long of a period? And how do you make the new place that you're at your home? That's a that's a tough one. I think I still don't have that like nailed down. I like when my when my wife's not with me and my dogs aren't with me. Like it's more so yeah. just holding down the floor until they get there but when i right. didn't have uh like my first year uh overseas i didn't have i was completely long distance just by myself the the main thing i focused on is i just routined everything and i would just okay. always give my mind something to i, I just kind of focused like kind of lost myself in the tasks and that was a way to kind of not necessarily handle the homesickness i didn't ever like figure it out i just almost you could almost tune it out for periods of time okay. and then some simple tricks too i think are also like i would always I always put pictures up on my wall of all the people i care about and stuff like that and if you know if you're from a different country too like you right. still will have moments that you remind you your country like when i'm in portugal sometimes i'll go get a hamburger because i'm like dude i just need a okay. burger or like i'll bring a couple things from home that yeah like ranch dressing or something like that like that so like if you're a spanish dude living in uh the, detroit bro detroit, no, 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 it was, <laughs> It was Scranton, right? It was Scranton last year. <laughs> this <office> guy. Is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But you might have to go out in Detroit and get a boca de jamón. A boca de yo, jamón. <laughs> bro, you got bro. We gotta teach you Spanish, bro. That, that can't happen anymore, bro. Last video with Real Madrid too, bro. I was like, okay. I was watching that shit. I was like, okay, get it right, bro. He said, boca. They was hating on my ass, bro. They was hating. Bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. Nah, next time, next time, bro. You're gonna get that. Okay, but that's, that's valid. Shout out to Judy Ramos, my high school Spanish teacher. She failed me.
Okay. She failed you? Now I Obviously. <laughs> now I understand why. Now I understand why. But yeah, bro, I feel like that's that's good. That's a good idea. I just don't know if Detroit has a lot of bocadillo de jamón spots. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to figure it out, though. You're going to have to yeah. find something. You know, something, something, like something, bro. Maybe, maybe whenever my parents come visit, if they come visit this year, I got to get them to bring something. me some. Yeah, bring me something, bro. Typical question. I wanted to be short, short answer. One thing we already talked about adaptability and not giving up. But the one thing as a basketball player, what do you think the skill required to be a pro? The most important one. So whether that's uh, knowing your role, uh, I feel like. Yeah. But most, okay. most like for shooting guards, for example, for myself, what's the one thing that I have to like nail down that you will say like, okay, this is essential for you to play if you're like six four, six five, six six. If you want to play at the next level, it's yes, it's for sure versatility and being able to shoot the ball i think versatility i mean like you got to be you can't have like st stuff that are like completely lacking you have to know yourself let's do it like that because you could be a knockdown shooter and not be able to dribble but if you're the best knockdown shooter then that's what yeah. you do but for me in my experience the most valuable thing and the most common thing that translates to a successful pro is versatility meaning okay. you can do a lot of different things you can rebound the ball you can pass the ball you can guard well, you could guard multiple positions, you can play multiple actions on offense, especially if you're 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 6 6 in that range, because like that range is of height, you're, you're, you're very, you're set up to be versatile. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's why I like, I've seen your, get some of your game, like I, that's what I think, like if I were to give you like coaching yeah. advice, I'd Bro, don't neglect anything like don't right like know how to post up know how to you know shoot off the dribble know how to come off a ball screen know how to come off a handoff like you either take that route or you become a specialist but i think versatile route usually translates more or is more 100%. common than a specialist if you're more versatile then you can like be a specialist but whether as yep. if you're a specialist then it's harder for you to like be more versatile in the future yep. you know for sure and i feel like that's and important also, like yeah go ahead yeah yeah, yeah. No, I was, was, was going to say. say right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, and I think the playing to your strengths, like that, that's that's really just being confident because, like, right. your strengths are the things you probably do the most often, work on the most. That's the start of your versatility, right? Right. You got to do those things first to show everything else. Like your capabilities and everything. Right. Like, like if you're not a great three point shooter off the dribble, you're not going to start the game with a th the three off the Facts. dribble. But if you're versatile, you maybe your first one, you get down the lane, get an and one, and now you're like feeling a little better. All right, let, I, I have this in my bag, so let me show you the three right. off the dribble. Bro, it's important to like start games and start the rhythm with things that you're comfortable with. Like, um, especially for the younger players that are watching this, maybe the 15, 14, 13 year olds, like, like, I feel like whenever you start a game, hitting a layup, you know, like feeling better, like getting in rhythm and everything, that's whenever you feel more confident in games. And that's always yeah. important. And that comes from preparation yeah. too. And I, th I think a bit of that is is more so talking on the idea of don't predetermine, don't come into the game like, yo, I'm gonna huck a bunch of threes. Maybe you start the game and you have to shoot a three early, but you're taking what the defense is giving you from the jump. Like, and that's part right. of playing to your strengths, playing to your confidence, like like less predetermining and knowing, okay, maybe I'm bigger, like, like I'm bigger, like I get going off a couple easy buckets. Trying to shift this a little bit. What do you think about like social media in terms of athletes? Like, would you recommend, would you think that's something that like, it's a good route for people? Like, do you think, uh, would you encourage people to like pursue that if they're comfortable with it? I think so. So this is kind of like where I eventually want to kind of take some of the stuff I'm working on with my own social media is start to inspire other athletes to do the same. In in the same capacity because there's with any tool it can be used for good and bad right and i think right. social media is so often used uh incorrectly or in a way that is not supporting an athlete's performance right you're comparing right. you're focusing on highlights you're focused on results and not the process there, there, there's because all you're seeing is this that that's one side of social media but there's another side and kind of what i've been doing with my social media is doing the type of content that pushes my mind and my game and it's almost another avenue that is parallel to my my actual basketball development okay. and because my content is based on you know my basketball development personal development game film all these different things it only right. helps my basketball game and so like right. that's what i encourage at all athletes to do is build that personal brand that not only is like social media and stuff but like it supports your sport, you know, build 100%. a brand that supports your sport and your development as a human and athlete. Because like, right. I, 
I was so one thing I'm proud of. I have a very healthy relationship with social media. Like I don't really care that much. I don't care that much about what other people think. I don't care about these things. I do it because it's a way to help me improve as a human and in turn motivate other people and inspire other people. So like I'm not really comparing. Like I don't I, I don't have that issue that much. Right. Um, a lot of I know a lot of athletes do, so yeah. you got to kind of be cautious of it. But I totally encourage athletes to tell their story and find a way to leverage social media to help the main thing. Because the main thing is is your sport or your whatever you are into. Yeah. So use social media to improve that. Don't you know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. focus on social media and let this die. You know, I don't know. Right. No, 100. percent And that's a, a thing that I was talking to my girlfriend to know the other day. I was like, man, I'm so happy I started doing this because I'm getting to know another perspective of Pablo that I didn't know I. Had, you know, mm -hmm. and that For always sure. like ends up helping in your basketball game too. Totally. Like uh talking to my trainer, I talked to you about him. He used to be a Euro League player, like ACB. And uh, at first he was like kind of like, I don't know if I like you doing this. Like this might like just take your focus off of basketball. But then a couple of videos that I've sent him, he said, like, hey, congrats, man. Like I see like I feel like you're just like getting a way to express yourself as a player, and that's helping you in the court. And I think people can tell the difference, and I think people respect the difference. So in terms right. like Europe is behind behind the U.S. in terms of athlete empowerment, I used to be really worried that people are going to say, like, you're focusing on this and not basketball. Right. And a lot of times you look at, you know, those guys that play for Panathinaikos, if they post anything else besides basketball, everyone's in there saying, like, focus on basketball, focus on basketball, right. especially right, right, when you're right, losing. Right. But I never really get those comments, very rarely. And it's because it's so visible that what I'm doing is helping my game. Like, you can hear from the start of my social media, YouTube journey especially, to now, how I view basketball, how I talk about basketball, basketball, how I, how I uh, understand the, the game right. and my journey. It's just leveled up. And so like, right. that's what I'm saying with what you're doing, dude. It's, it's exactly, that's why, I, that's why I was so like uh, excited to talk to you about stuff when I saw, when I had seen your 40 day journey, cause that's like the stuff yeah. I do. That's it's parallels, man. Just wrapping this up. I want to ask you two more things. First thing, what are, what are the most important parts of your, of your day? Like routine wise, what do you, what do you think? Yeah. So I think I've kind of changed my mind on this. I used to think of, okay, you, you had to have this rigid routine that you do every single day. And I think you have to have two compartments of your routine. You have to have non-negotiables. Okay. You do this every day. In the same way you brush your teeth every day, you have a couple things that your day is incomplete without. Some people maybe read the Bible. Some people it may be, uh, you know, like for me, it's writing my intentions every morning. This is like, I eat my breakfast, I write my intentions. This is what I do. If I don't do it, I know the rest of my day is going to be a little off. Like if you don't brush right. your teeth, your, your, your breath can smell that. Uh -huh. 100%. If, you, if I don't write down my intentions, my day is going to be a little off. So you have this. And there's another side of your, your routine. And these are things that are built around kind of the flow of your of your week, of your days. And that's like, okay, you know, I'm not feeling too good. My body's feeling stiff. Let's, let's put in a mobility routine today. But it's looking okay. at your days through this lens. So I think when building a routine, you have to, the most important thing is find your non-negotiables, find whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a number, but things that you know if you do this every day, your days will be better. Okay. You need to right. do that every day and do it at the same time. And then the other ones are, okay, I find these things that fit into my day to make me, uh, to adjust to how I'm feeling. Um, and okay. I think that's the best way to build out a routine. And last question, bro, just to end it up. If you had to give an advice to a 16, 17 year old Trey, what would it be, bro? Yeah. Like one thing that you would have loved to know before. I know it's a tough one because now you got to go back in nah, time. That's a good one. That's a good one. I, I think it'd be to, uh, to have fun and enjoy the moment because, uh, uh, time moves fast and you're going to get to where you want to get to if you just keep keep trying to get better right. and uh, trust it you know like like you said it before it's, it's difficult to trust but uh keep trying to flex that trust muscle and and, and believe that things will be okay because they will be yeah. they will be yeah it's not going to be how you imagine it maybe but it'll be there so that's great man hey one more yeah. time bro i appreciate you for coming yeah. it's been a, it's been great just talking to you for like an hour um and i hope i hope everybody that's watching this that they will for sure do but they can take something away from this and yeah. you know grow grow in their pursuit of being great or at atypical like you say that's well, great cheers, brother. Hey. i appreciate you man and uh, i think you're doing god's work man i think uh, yep. even more people are trying to inspire the next generation and it's even more inspiring when you're currently on your journey more people want to be, sure. they, they kind of want to be with you and it, it makes people feel less alone and it's just, you know, it parallels life. So, uh, for sure, bro. for sure.